Hi, I'm Christopher, and welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast. This episode is all about my trip to New York. I'm going to cover yarn shops, Vogue Knitting Live, my interview with Christy Glass, and a special collaboration I have with someone in the U.S. So sit back, grab your favorite drink, and I'll tell you my story. time in New York City and I left a couple days early because there was a lot of stuff I wanted to do and so I got there on Tuesday and I stayed in Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen was awesome because it's just far enough away from uh, Times Square but it's still in close proximity to to the venue uh, the Marriott for Vogue Knitting Live and so I was on 45th Street same street that Vogue Knitting Live was on but I was on between 9th and 10th and it was great because uh, it was quiet. It was relatively quiet. And the apartment that I rented was fantastic. It had, if you just think about some of the New York movies that you watch or TV shows, not Friends, but all the others, it was just like that. So you walk in and bedroom's there, got a little kitchen and then a living area. And then you look out the window onto uh, 45th and you see a fire escape. Uh, so that was really cool. I was on the second floor. Uh, it was perfect, perfect size. It was perfect place to just get away and, and relax away from the craziness. And I had my window open the whole time. And so, um, and there was hardly any traffic, which was great. I didn't think you were, you were able to do that in New York. So it was perfect place. I was really happy with it. So I get there and drop off my stuff and then head down to Soho because I'm going to the Lower East Side to, to Club Coming. Um, so I thought I'd stop in, in Soho, check out a couple galleries and go to Pearl Soho. It's raining, it's kind of cold, and I go into Pearl Soho and there's nobody there. It's, I couldn't believe it, I thought it was gonna be packed. Because last year when I was there, it was packed and it was packed with a lot of Canadians as well. This time there's hardly anybody there. Uh, again, I'm really the only person in the store other than the salespeople. So I chatted with them and asked them what that was all about. And they, they thought, they basically said it was the calm before the storm. So all the craziness when the people show up in, in Manhattan prior to Vogue Canadian Live. So I went through the store. I didn't really see anything new there. I picked up two skeins of yarn, was gonna buy them and then realized that these are the same two that I bought last year. So I put them back and left the store without buying anything. And so um, made it, made my way to Club Coming after that. And Knit Night starts between, it, it runs between six and eight o'clock at, um, and so basically I get there about 15 minutes before six and there's probably about eight people outside. And I thought they were just outside the club smoking. But then I got there and realized, no, they're lining up to get in because it only opens at six o'clock. And so as soon as the doors open, people rush for, for seats and because there aren't, there's not a lot of seating in club coming. So I got the same table I had last time, and which was great because you can stand up, you can sit down, whatever you wanted, because it, it was a high table. Uh, and I saw a lot of the people that I um, have worked with in the past or, or friends, um, Lewis was there, Brooklyn Boy Knits, Cairo Designs was there, um, John Griswold was there, first time I actually met him, we've communicated a lot through Instagram. Uh, actually there were a number of guys there who participated in the um, Knitted Chalk exhibit, um, exhibition, so it was great to see them, give them feedback on, on how it went. Um, and so it was really nice, it, I, had a, I had a fantastic time. and. Uh, Lewis brought a, a friend of his, a, a fellow designer from Barcelona, Esteban, and he's, his work is phenomenal, really, really great. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to all of these things that I'm talking about so that you can, you can check them out yourselves, but um, you know, really super nice guy as well. So I get there, it's packed, people are trying to get tables, and um, Brittany Maxwell was hosting along with Josh Bennett, and the special guest was London Kay, which I, and I didn't know that at the time. And and if you, for those of you who've watched 
prior um, YouTube episodes. I'm a big fan of London Kay. I think she's a beautiful person, uh, just you know, fantastic artist and, and crocheter. So uh, I was really happy that she was there. So she, she was up at the front talking about what it was like to be on The Amazing Race and then the just the phenomenal trajectory or, um, with respect to her career and, and how that's gone. So it was really interesting. And then after that, you know, people had a couple of drinks in them and they started to loosen up and, and uh, conversation was free flowing. I met so many great people. Met people from uh, Vienna, who I kept bumping into um, in New York the, the following days. Uh, I met a lot of great people, a lot of a lot of New Yorkers. Uh, so it was really nice. I'm really glad, happy that I went. And then right after that, I went back to the apartment because I was working on a project. And the project, um, I wanted it finished before I had my interview with Christy Glass. And my interview with Christy Glass was Wednesday morning. So I went back, started knitting away, and the project that I was working on came from a photo that was out around Christmas time. And basically, um, ex-Prince Harry and, and Meghan were in BC, British Columbia, uh, with their son Archie and Harry is holding Archie up and Archie has a hat and the hat kind of looks like a, um, a pussycat hat with two balls on, on either side and so and th th these hats have been you know made and um, over and over the, the years that they're it's not it's not anything new but the fact that Archie had it the Commonwealth knitters went crazy and so people were quickly trying to get patterns out uh, for the hat and so I thought you know what it'd be fun if I knit the Archie hat and wear it as an adult and so I went home to, to knit it and basically took some yarn this is uh, Canadian wool so it's a, it's a mixture of a number of breeds of, of wool and I dyed it in indigo and um, indigo and chestnut and so I have um, you, you'll see the stripes in in here uh, on it. It's just the way that the the way that I dyed it. Um, I actually dipped half of it in and left half of it out, and then the way it self stripes um, comes out this way. So I was really happy with it. Uh, so what I did to to make this hat is um, I went down one size in needles and um, started the the ribbing on it, and then increased the size of the needle um, until I got three quarters of the way up, and then I decreased twice the size of the needle. And then at the very top, I just did a three needle bind off. So that's it, that's, that's my Archie hat. So I was wearing that around New York City, taking photos all week of, uh, with me, me wearing the hat um, in different spots in, in New York. Definitely got a lot of comments, a lot of stares, a lot of thumbs up. Um, so it was, it was fun. Anyway, I, and, I, and I wore that up to Christy's, Christy Glass's house the, the following day to show her that. Um, when you have an interview with Christy, there really isn't any set agenda. She's, she basically said to me, do you want to come back? And because I was there two years ago, I guess, or a year and a half ago when, I, when we were in Rhinebeck. And so she said, you know, let's catch up. Let's talk about what you've been doing and then what, what's coming ahead. And so I thought, OK, great. I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to talk about. Uh, but I also wanted to bring my yarn and show my yarn to her, show, show the dyeing that I've been doing and show her the different uh, types of yarn I've been or wool I've been working with. And so I had to be there by noon. So I got there 15 minutes early just so we could set up and whatnot. And so I get called up into her, into her place and she's still getting ready. So it was great. We had a chance to catch up and talk about stuff. Um, Christy, I, I love Christy very much. She's a fantastic person and um, you know, it was really nice to just to catch up on what's going on in our lives. And so um, then when the time hit, you know, 12 o'clock, we got in front of the camera and started talking. And uh, we completely, well, I went, not that there's a script ever, but I kind of went off script and um, for what we did have as, a, as an outline of what we we're going to talk about. And I just asked her to start guessing the yarn that I dyed uh, with, or the, the, the botanicals I used to dye my yarn. And so that we went down that road. Um, so it was fun. It was a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. It was. I think the interview went well. Um, so we'll have to see. It's going to be out in March. Um, and so what I found interesting also is she's. Can you imagine all the stuff that she does during Rhinebeck and during Vogue Knitting Live? You know, every minute is accounted for. And so at one o'clock, 
or just before one o'clock, um, Louis Brooklyn Boynitz arrives with Estevan, the um, designer from Barcelona, to, to be the next set of interviews. So, you know, she she had a cramp back day. She must be completely exhausted afterwards. But, you know, I enjoyed it as as always. Enjoyed the conversation. Also, just wanted to mention that uh, Christy Glass. You know, I think she does a phenomenal job in in this field she, within the the knitting and crochet community she connects a lot of us to to one another i mean i've learned so much on just watching her her shows that you know i see the world through different lenses i see what people are interested in what people are working on it really gives me a more fulsome understanding of our knitting and crochet community and so and and the accessibility to to these people is something that she brings and i i love that about it so you know thank you christy for all the work that you do do in, in the knitting and crochet uh, community. I, I really appreciate it. So after the Christy Glass interview, I dropped my stuff off at the apartment and then I wanted to concentrate on the Upper East Side because there's one yarn shop in particular I wanted to see and that is Strings. And I've heard a lot about Strings. Um, you know, people have described it as bougie and um, I would say that that's probably accurate if you take any non negative connotation out of out of Bushi, it's exactly what you'd expect in the Upper East Side for me. You know, it's a type of place that you look at it. It's on the second floor. Um, it's beautifully the the aesthetic is is really nice in the store. The yarn's gorgeous, and you would expect Sarah Jessica Parker to walk in at any moment and and start buying yarn. Uh, that's 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 the feel that I get uh, from that place, and so it's very unique. It's it's very I think it's very New York. It feels very New York to me. Um, I liked it. I, I I really liked it. And I know uh, Stacy Charles has a hand in it, or you know, and he was actually there in the store. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of of his. He has, you know, he's one of those gems in the United States that just has so much information um, with respect to this industry, and. Um, I've, I've watched a couple of interviews with him. I've had an opportunity to talk to him, uh, and he was there at the store, so I was really excited to to be able to say hello and and and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, it's it's it's. It, I would encourage people to go and visit it. It's 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 interesting. It's definitely different than a lot of the other yarn stores that are there. Um, it has a, a very specific feel to it, and I guess you know the the best way I can describe it is that it feels Upper East Side to me, um, in the best way possible. So then after I'm looking at it, oh, I did buy some yarn there that I want to share with you. So it's in here. Um, this is Lang and it's uh, Camel. Camel and Merino and Silk. And so it's um, quite nice, very, very soft. And um, I bought this in one in gray as well. I've actually bought two gray and one green. Um, so I started knitting with it and I was using wooden needles and not not great for for this yarn um, was not happy with it at all so I took it off the needles and I'm going to I'm going to try my Addy clicks because uh, I think that it, it it's going to be a much much better experience with my Addy clicks and in the name of those so I, I would recommend popping in and checking it out um, I like one of the things I like about the New York yarn stores are a lot of them are completely different to one another and, and have a, their own unique feel to it. And I think it's worth experiencing that. So then I noticed that there was another yarn shop just one street over and it is called Knitting 321. So I thought I'd just check that out. It's it's one street up and a couple over. So I went in there and I was looking at it and it's tiny. It's, it's really small. It's very narrow and it's at, it's either at street level or a little bit below street level and I couldn't get in the store. Um, so I opened the door and then I noticed that the Swift is going around and she's working, the owner's working on the Swift. And so I had to knock and then she moved the Swift over and I was able to get in to the store and I was looking at a quick look around, um, not tons of product, uh, but I, I found it interesting. And she kind of looked at me like, you know, wondering why I was there because I'm obviously not a customer of hers and I'm not sure if I look like a knitter or not, but I just got that feeling that that's what she was thinking. Um, so I figured, you know, I'll be in here a couple minutes, just check it out and then leave. And I ended up spending 45 minutes to an hour in there. And, and for two reasons, one is she, 
the owner is is fantastic. She uh, formerly uh, she spent her career, most of her career, in the fashion industry in New York, and as a designer and 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 whatnot. Um, and now she has her own shop, her knitting shop, and she's really client based. So she works closely with clients. She gives uh, tutorials, and then you look over at the yarn, and the yarn is so interesting. Is she specializes in European yarns and it's an eclectic an eclectic group of, of yarn and um, so she was showing me we were talking about all the different types of yarn that she had and it was really interesting and, and she buys what in, what she, she you know she buys the yarn that inspires her uh, doesn't matter about price point and but she wants quality and she wants um, something that is truly inspires her because she does a lot of does a ton of knitting as well and a lot of design so i went in and looked around we talked about a lot of stuff um and i bought some hand spun yarn from israel and it's indigo dyed it's beautiful it's nice and soft and this is from uh, soul wool and soul wool is from israel and there's something going on with the company i'm not sure what it is um and so i went on the website couldn't figure out i, I couldn't um figure it out so in terms of what's going on with the company so maybe maybe you can but really nice product I really like it and so I'm, I'm glad I picked that up but she was super 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 nice and one thing she she left with me was she said you, you know if you want to be inspired I would encourage you to go to the Dover Street Market in New York and so uh, I told her I'd never been there uh, there's Dover Street Market stores all over the world. And it's really where um, celebrities go or you know, people that have a, a lot of disposable income. And she said, I'm not sending you there to, to buy anything. And that's not why she goes there. But it's just the way things are displayed, what people are wearing. She said, it's truly something that inspires you. And so that was a fantastic tip because oftentimes if you're in a yarn shop and you're talking about inspiration, they'll tell you to go to other yarn shops and that's not um, that's that's not where you get, really where I get my inspiration. So uh, I thought that was a really smart uh, comment, and so yeah, I really hit it off with her, and I absolutely loved it there. So I would highly recommend it. That is knitting three two one. Uh, make sure you check it out. It's 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 definitely worth it. It's different than any other yarn shop in in New York. So right after that, it was knit night at Knitty City, and that is so if we're talking about um, Manhattan and. Um, I was on the east side. Um, Central Park's on the in the, in the center. It's on it's on the west side. So I'd have to cross uh, to cross Central Park. Uh, so I took a cab over and got there. And I was in Nitty City last year as well. And so you get into the store, Nitty City, and there's a ton of people in the front of the store um, knitting. And then in the back is the the men's group. Um, there were so many men that night that they had to bring extra chairs in. It was probably one of the largest groups that they've had in, in, a, in a long time. So it was nice to catch up with people, people that I had met um, the year before, uh, people that I'm contact on on Instagram. So that was that was that was quite nice. So I'm glad I, I'm glad I experienced that. I was exhausted after that, so I went home and or back to the apartment and um, slept for a little while. Um, didn't go out that night. Just stayed in knit. Uh, and, and wrote some notes and, and, and whatnot. Uh, so the next morning was Thursday morning. And Thursday morning, I, I brought my skates and I really wanted to go skating. And I've never been skating at Rockefeller Center before. So I went there first thing in the morning because I heard it can be really crowded. It's expensive too, it's really expensive. It's 25 bucks to, to skate. Um, I could have gone, I'd never have done it. That That's great, it was a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, I wore my Archie hat when I was skating, and actually a couple people um, that I know saw me saw me skating, so it was it was funny. A lot of tourists there, um, but you can go to other places in New York and skate for free. So I will probably do that next time. But I got that the Rockefeller Center out of my system, and it was snowing and then a little bit of rain. It was actually very similar to the weather that we had last year when I was in New York. And so the best way to do for, for me is either you go to a, when it's raining or it's cold is either go to a museum or go to the spa. And so I went to the spa again this year. It's a Russian Turkish spa that's been around for over a hundred years. The mob used to go there and you know, make deals. Um, Colin Farrell 
hangs out there sometimes. Uma Thurman. Um, so it's you know there's a it's, it's really interesting. It's very basic too. There's 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 no frills to this thing. Um, it's about six saunas, a couple steam rooms, and it's a, it was great. So it was great to spend a little time there. And that's in the kind of the lower east side of New York. And so then I got out got out of that place, started walking south, and went past downtown knitting or downtown yarn shop. And I, there was no name on the outside, and it was not a big space, but it had a great feel to it. It had it, a lot of wood and a lot of yarn hanging, and it felt like a lot of indie dyers as well. So I, I loved it. And I was talking to, I'm not sure if she's the owner or one of the people who worked there, who used to be a natural dyer. And so we started chatting about natural dye. And I saw the women from Vienna um, that were, that I'd met two nights earlier. Uh, so it was nice to see familiar faces when I was in the yarn shop. Um, but I, I definitely will go back to that and spend more time. I didn't have an, a lot of time because I had to eat and then get to Brooklyn. So I hop in a cab to, to get to Brooklyn and my cabbie uh, was from England. And so I told him about the Archie hat and then he told me that he and his wife were expecting in April. And so I said, well, give me your contact information and I will knit you up a hat. So probably use, um, and he did, he sent me his, his contact information. So I will be sending him a hat in April. Uh, this is one that I, another Archie hat, and this one is onion, dyed with onion skins, uh, chestnut and, um, oh, and the chestnut is over, uh, sorry, the black walnut, and the black walnut is over uh, Gotland sheep. This is just uh, a mixture of Canadian wool, and I use the same um, bind off for this one as well. So, um, come April, I will show you, before I mail it off, I'll, I'll show you the, the hat. I'm probably going to knit it with um, cotton, I would, I would imagine. We'll see. We'll, we'll check it out. I'll probably buy some undyed cotton and then dye it a, a color. Not sure if it's going to be Archie, Archie blue colored or, or not, so we'll, we'll see. So anyway, I get to String Thing Studios in Brooklyn. It's men's knit night. And I called the owner, uh, Felicia, before I arrived and said, would it be okay if I brought some yarn uh, to, to raffle off to, to people? Because they did that last year. And so uh, I got there and I noticed that as soon as I got in the store, it's packed in the back of the store. And um, it was veterans. The veterans were holding a knit night there. And so, um, and it was great to hear them laugh all night and talk. And and so that the group that I was affiliated with, the Men's Knit Night, was halfway up the store. Um, and so we had our space and, you know, it was nice to connect with people as well that I haven't talked to in a while. Um, and then I had a bunch of friends show up there as well, which was kind of funny because uh, I'm in Brooklyn and uh, people called up and asked me where I'd be in New York. And so they, sh they showed up. So that was nice to see familiar faces. Um, but they, you know, I raffled off the the yarn it was really nice um and then i was about to leave and so i said goodbye to i was making my way through the store to say goodbye to certain people and some person i've been trying to contact for a while since rhinebeck uh, when i talked about it in, in the rhinebeck coverage um was yasmin from designs by yasmin and so I saw her there, and I think we connected at the same time. She saw me, I saw her, and I've never met her before in person. And so she uh, got up out of her chair and um, gives the best hugs in New York. And we started chatting and, and catching up. Um, so it was really nice. It was, it was completely unexpected. And I'm a huge fan of hers on Instagram. And I watch everything that she does because she's, you know, she puts me in a happy spot whenever I watch her stuff. And so uh, she's even, she's that way in real real life too, exactly the same. So it was it was really fantastic to meet her. So then I said goodbye to everybody left and um, went to a bar to meet two fellow Canadians, um, Marie-Yves and uh, Zoe, who own Kroshenko. And um, it, was, it was great to catch up with them as well. It's funny catching up with them in, in Brooklyn. They were actually staying just I think a couple of houses away from the bar we were in. So it was nice to catch up with them. Usually when I go out with French Canadians, uh, my morning the next morning is really rough. Uh, but this this one, I got home at a reasonable time and, and was fine the next day. So I had, a, I had a wonderful time. I think Friday, Friday is the day that Vogue Knitting, Vogue Knitting Live started and started at 5.30, 5, 5.30. So there was, gave me an opportunity to do a 
bunch of other things in the morning because I wanted to, I knew that once I hit Fogue live, I wouldn't have any time to do anything else in New York. So I went to the Met and I went to the Met for two reasons. One, there was a fantastic fashion show that was on, um, which I found, you know, absolutely incredible. Um, but the, the other reason that I went there was to um, see some artwork from Kent Monkman. Kent Monkman is a Canadian. So yeah, walk into the store, or walk in, pardon me, walk into the um, Met and look around and there's two huge canvases in the foyer. And they're absolutely huge. And it's works that have been, that he completed. Um, and it's fantastic to see a Canadian in there, but it's also fantastic to see a queer Canadian in there. It's also even more exciting to see an indigenous Canadian in there. And so, I mean, think about that. It's like Canadian, indigenous, queer, um, you know, pretty spectacular. I didn't think I'd ever in my lifetime see that. And so Kent's work, Kent has had a phenomenal career, especially over the last five years, he's just skyrocketed. And, and what he does is he basically takes Canadian history and um, shows it from his lens. Because oftentimes when you, you know, when history is told by the victors, really. And so he's ta talking about it from indigenous perspective, uh, from, a, from a queer perspective, and really powerful pieces. I've been to his studio a couple times. I've heard him lecture, I've been to his lectures. And, uh, you know, really interesting person. And especially the way he creates the art as well. He has complete creative control over his art, um, and he'll get models to, to go in and they'll take photos of the models that are dressed in the pieces that he wants. Um, and then he's got this giant canvas and with uh, Velcro strip along the side and an iPad. And the iPad, basically they take a picture, it's on the iPad, and then they recreate it on, on the canvas. And when I say they, he's got an army of painters who work in his studio and, and paint the pictures, and then he will go in and touches up the hair and does other things um, to it. And that's why he's so prolific as well. Uh, but it was fantastic to see him there. So I was really, really excited. Then I went, jumped on the subway and went all the way down to um, the village area. And there was another gallery I wanted to check out and tons of Canadian content in this gallery as well, which I was really surprised at. Um, so I'm in Soho and I'm on my way to the gallery and I bump into this woman or I see this woman who has a dog and the dog looks very similar to my dog. It is a, I have a standard poodle and he's a party poodle. So he has black and white patches all over him. And I said, oh, I like your party poodle. And she said, it's not a poodle. It's actually an Italian breed. And she started talking about that. And I noticed, I really, the reason I started talking to her is because she had um, an accent piece, an orange accent piece on the dog. And then she was wearing an orange accent piece as well. And orange is very, very in right now. And so, I started talking to her about that and I was wearing a vintage um, buffalo plaid wool jacket made in Canada and she said I have a store that I have to take you to I said okay sure um, and so we went to Woolrich and Woolrich in Soho I'm not sure if any of you have gone but you definitely have to go to to this store you walk in and they have she wanted to show me the snow room and the snow room is glass basically and inside this glass box is snow and um, birch trees and so what you basically do is you take your jacket take a Woolrich jacket put it on and then go in the snow room and basically you can tell whether or not you're cold and and whether or not the jacket's working so i thought that was pretty pretty amazing and then she told me about a couple other stores as well so after we finished that, we left the store and started chatting. And she said, okay, I need to go now because I'm meeting a friend this afternoon um, to pick up some avocado pits. And I looked at her and it's like, are you kidding me? Because there's really only one thing you do with avocado pits. And so I looked at her and she said, I'm going to pick up the pits because I will be dying silk this afternoon. And I said, oh my gosh, like of all the people I stop and talk to in New York, it's another natural dyer. So I thought that that was quite amusing. So we started talking about natural dyeing, uh, but it was, it was pretty amazing. So anyway, after that conversation, after I finished with, with the galleries in Soho, I went back up to the marketplace for Vogue Knitting Live and registered 
and I didn't have a, have a chance to look at anything because I wanted to get to the fashion show. It was a kaleidoscope fashion show, and it was put together primarily by Lewis Brooklyn Boy Knits. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a link to this, to his uh, video of this, because um, I can't do it justice by, by talking about it. You really have to see it. I will say it was fantastic. Uh, what I loved about it is that it was tons of diversity in, in this. You know, it was, it was not um, in terms of you know, the designers, in terms of the, um, the garments that were on display. It was phenomenal. And so I uh, highly recommend you check out this video. Uh, he, Lewis also had a, a one specific great outfit that I thought I absolutely loved. And then Gregory Stitch is in it. And Gregory Stitch is just unbelievable, unbelievable designer. Um, he was going to be huge. And he had some um, jaw-dropping pieces as well. I actually sat beside his aunt during the, during the whole show. So thought it was thought it was fantastic. So I'm going to put a link to that so that you can see it. And please check it out. It's, it's definitely worth it. Then I, after that, I had to run out. I was seeing Tina. Tina Turner, the Tina Turner story on Broadway. And a friend of mine told me about it and said, you know, he cried and blah, 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 blah about that. And I just thought, really? So, so, and he said it was amazing, absolutely amazing. So it was because of that recommended recommendation that I went to see it. And he was right. It was phenomenal. And the ending is so amazing. Everyone was exact, was so wired when they left that uh, theater. And one elder, elderly woman said, you know, how am I supposed to sleep tonight? I'm just so excited and, and, and revved up after. So it was, it was really well done. I have no idea how the lead actress um, goes to work every day and, and does this over and over and over again. She put so much energy into it, but it was a phenomenal performance. So if you have an opportunity to check out the Tina show on Broadway, I would highly recommend it. So the next day was all about Vogue Knitting Live. So I get there, and it, we're talking, it's Saturday, Saturday morning. And um, so I went through the marketplace and it was packed as always on Saturday. One of the things I noticed with Vogue Knitting Live over the years, it's been 10 years old, I think it was celebrating its 10th anniversary. The first time I went was probably around eight years ago. Uh, and I've noticed that it's grown significantly. And so there's some good things about that and there's some not so good things about that. Um, the good things are that, uh, well, let me start with the, the negative first. So the, the thing that I found that I was missing in Vogue this year is diversity with respect to wool. Um, there was not a lot of diversity amongst the wool. So tons of merino, um, but the farmers were missing. There were only a couple farms there and you know, that's unfortunate for me because you know, I love seeing heritage breeds represented. Um, I love seeing other types of fiber there as well. I mean, there was some alpaca and there were a couple of other things which I'll get into, but really miss that. I miss the farmer part of it. And you know, a yarn festival can't be everything to everyone. And I totally get that. So it's definitely changing. And I think part of the change is that the cost of entry now because it's so popular it has increased and so i've talked i was talking to a couple of farmers who were there who said that um you know it's just it's difficult to get in now because of the the cost they just it's difficult for them to justify so which is unfortunate that's that's i guess the negative part of that um positive well i guess the other negative thing is just it, there's a lot of homogeneous feel to it in terms of people are providing or, or creating the same product. So it's got a very homogeneous feel um, around with respect to the, the craft of, of dyeing itself. So positives, you think about, well, how are you gonna stand out? If you are a vendor and you can jazz up your vending area and, or your booth and make it look great, but really it's the product that you need to focus on. And so, um, that part is exciting to me because I want to see how they compete with one another. How do they push each other in terms of producing a unique product? And Lady Dye does that um, for me anyway. She's got a, her dyeing is 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 unique. Uh, I think it's really interesting. And so I went to her booth in the beginning. Couldn't get in. It was packed. Went back. It was packed. So I uh, waved to her, walked past, and didn't get into her booth until later on in the day. And one yarn in particular that really caught my eye was uh, Bloody Mary. 
thought this was really cool. And so I'm really interested in, in knitting this up. I love I love the color, but she's got a very unique way of dyeing. Uh, it's very interesting eye to color. And I definitely wanna, we, we chatted about that a little bit as well. Um, she was talking about uh, inspiration from street art and which I can, I, I, that makes sense. And looking at her logo as well, completely makes sense. So um, really happy with that. But one of the things she did, which I absolutely love in, in her uh, booth is that she also housed other products from other dyers. Uh, one in particular I wanna talk about, and that is a natural dyer. So here you've got acid-based dyer, top of her craft right now. She's really, really, really good. She's um, introducing or bringing in a another dyer who's a natural dyer. Um, and this is M, M to the third uh, yarn company. And so M to the third, I was really interested in talking to her. She is from, I think she's from San Francisco and she, I think she lives in the New York area, or I mean the Boston area now. Um, she's been dying for a couple of years and I found her colors really interesting. Getting a green this color is, 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 a, is a challenge uh, when you're natural dyeing. So I thought she did a very good job of that. And uh, this is also uh, quite nice. This is Peruvian wool. Uh, I think it's Merino as well. Um, so she she did a great job, but uh, that and then I wasn't finished in that booth. So I'm looking around, and my eyes always attracted to male representation in in the knitting world because um, there isn't a ton of it. And so I saw a book with a guy on on the cover, and it's basically uh, gentlemen never talk, uh, a gentleman never tells the size, and then in brackets of his yarn stash, and. I fall into that trap as well because I would have no idea what my yarn stash is because I've got yarn all over the place. I, and it's kind of like I'm a, I feel like a squirrel packing food around everywhere. I've got I've got yarn scattered all over the place um, in the cabin. So anyway, I was really happy to to um, buy this. And um, Laverne Benton is the illustrator, and she has her own um, Instagram account. So I encourage you to go and see that. I've just got a ton of books and uh, very, very good. So this is basically for organizing projects and whatnot. Um, I asked that she sign the book. So that was really nice of her. And I also got a photo with her as well. Uh, but, you know, kudos to Lady Di for pulling this together. She had a really great booth. Uh, I loved it. And so um, looking forward to, to seeing more of, her, more of her work. Then I moved on to, I realized that the yarn that I bought um, were from the same vendors that I bought the year before, pretty much, uh, for the ones that were there. And, and, you know, I picked up, when even when I was in Lady Di's booth, I picked up a shirt and she looked at me, she said, you already bought that shirt. So, <laughs> so um, I put that back, but I did, I did buy the yarn. Um, but the next one I want to talk about is the fibrists. And... The Fiberist is at another dyer that I really like. Um, I like the branding, but more importantly, I like the product. And so they had they had a new product on, on display. I, I bought one that I bought last year too. So this one is uh, Bison and Merino. And no, sorry, this is Bison and Silk. This is Bison and Silk and it's it feels great. I love the color. I love the feel of the bison silk as well. So I'm looking forward to knitting with that. And this one is yak and merino and silk. Um, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It is so nice. Um, I actually wish I bought, purchased two of these skeins. Um, I'm not sure that they might be, I don't know if they're going to be at Rhinebeck or not. I think that they go to the men's knitting retreat as well. I'm not sure, but I'll have to reach out because I, I really like this. This is great and it feels fantastic. So I can't wait to knit this, this up as well. And then I went to um, one of the few farms that was there. And this is the White Barn Farm. And they are located in Hudson, the Hudson Valley area in, in New York. Um, and she's a natural dyer and she does really great work. And so one of them is Cormo and CVM and 
this is the Cormelon CVN, CVM, right here. Uh, it's a nice and bouncy and squishy. Um, I think the color saturation is quite nice as well. And then this one is Cordell and Cormo. So 80% Cormo and 20% um, Cordell. And I thought that this was beautiful as well. I, th I think she did a great job. So I'm really happy to, to pick these skeins up and I'm looking forward to knitting, to knitting those as well. I want to wrap up by saying, with respect to the uh, Vogue Knitting Live New York, that they did a really, really good job with respect to diversity and inclusion. Uh, you noticed it in the fashion shows. You noticed it um, where, in terms of where the vendors were located. Uh, they had a BIPOC group um, within the uh, actual uh, marketplace. So, you know, hats off to you for, for that. Um, you definitely have set the bar for... Um, so many other festivals. You all, they also had a DNI and uh, discussion as well on, I think it was Friday afternoon. So yeah, hats off to you, Folk Newton Live. I think, I think you did a great job. And again, you've, you've just moved the bar uh, for others to, to, to um, reach and aspire to. Now I want to tell you about a collaboration that I had, or that, that is going on right now. And it is with um, Long Island Farm and Fiber. So it's called Long Island Yarn and Fiber. Long Island Yarn and Farm. Now I want to tell you about a collaboration that I have uh, that's going on right now. It's with Long Island Yarn and Farm. And so I didn't talk about this booth uh, at Vogue Knitting Live, but Tabitha. It runs the booth, uh, runs the farm, and I love her work. I love her aesthetic. Um, booth's always fantastic, and she's also at Rhinebeck as well. And so every every time I'm there, I always make sure that I go and see it because you can tell that she's touched everything in, in, in the uh, booth. It has her stamp on it. Um, so there's that, that feel to it that I and that aesthetic that I love. And so anyway, she reached out and asked if I wanted to collaborate with her. And... Um, do some dyeing, dyeing some of her fiber, and I said absolutely yes. So I picked up some of her fiber, uh, got a whole bunch of it, and I'll be dyeing it. One of the things I love about her fiber is the way she displays it as well is really important. Because a lot of people you know, take their skeins and then they you know, either put them in cakes, you don't see too many cakes, but or you just um, roll it up and and put a label around it. You know, one of the selling features of her fiber, for me anyway, is just the way the yarn drapes and feels. And um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the way that it's spun. Uh, it's just beautiful. And so I'm really excited to be working with this yarn and dyeing this yarn because I already know what I'm going to do with it. And when you see it hanging there with all of her other yarn, you'll definitely know it's Cabin Boy Knits. Um, who did the dyeing because I've got something very specific that I want to do with this yarn, which is different than, than her other yarn. I'm hoping she likes it. Um, and I think, I, you know, we've, we've been talking in terms of, you know, what, what are we going to do with the yarn once it's, it's dyed? And so I had proposed to um, sell it at, the, at Knit City in Montreal in March. Um, so we'll see if I, if we if if that works out. Um, if not, that's that's fine too. It will be for sale at some at some point. Uh, but I'd love to I'd love to sell it there and, and represent or have her uh, farm represented in in Montreal. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but I'm really excited about dying with this, and I'll share that with everybody as well as I go through the dying process. I'll show you the end product. So really happy with this. Really excited, uh, and can't wait to die with it. Before I wrap up, I just wanted to thank Lola Bean for this fantastic shirt. This is the one that I'm wearing today. I bought it in her store. Um, I bought also a, a pin um, for my knitting bag. Uh, but I love her store too, and it, it was nice to, to see and, and catch up with her. So thanks for the shirt. This is really cool. If you want one, just go onto her website. I think you can buy them there. Um, and also just want to thank people for coming and, and talking to me and, and you know coming up and introducing yourselves and sharing your story with me, uh, giving me feedback on, on presentations like this as well. So 
you know, I had a super time. I think you really, really, you know, we have these conversations, at least for me, find them incredibly valuable. Um, and I really enjoy it. So thank you so much for coming up and, and for all the people that came up and had a conversation with me. And, and Vincent, Vincent came up and gave me a pin that his partner um, put together on, um, basically it's an enameled pin. And so um, I wanted to, what I'm gonna do is put a link to this because I think the proceeds from this go to an organization in New Jersey and the organization supports um, LGBTQ plus youth, um, 18 to 29 years old. It gives them a safe place to, to hang out. I think it's called Real, The Real. So I will put that in um, the footnotes as well so that you can reach out if, if you want. It's like, there's, there's many of them um, similar to, to this. So uh, anyway, thank you, Vincent, for, for giving me the pin. And again, thank you everyone for coming up and having a chat. I hope you enjoyed this and keep giving me your feedback. I also wanna do a shout out to, you know, the people that uh, reached out to me and asked for a pattern, the, the ball pattern. That is definitely coming. I have, haven't forgotten about you. Uh, keep your questions coming. If there's anything that you want me to cover that I haven't covered, if there's a topic that you're interested in, uh, just fire it off and let me know and I'm happy to, to dig into that and, and do a presentation or a talk on that as well. So take care everyone. Have a fantastic week and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.